Hey guys, and thank you again for joining me on my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me for the premiere of today's episode, and it is called Faith Under Pressure. Now, I am Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I am wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. I want to make sure y'all, before I get started, I want you guys to just hit the chat. Tell me how you're doing today. Tell me what city you're in. Tell me how I can best serve you. Tell me some things you want to hear about. Let's just get those chats popping. I'm excited to talk to y'all. I'm enjoying doing this. I don't know how many days in a row God wants me to do it, but I hope that we can continue chatting it up and, you know, we could, uh, you know, continue to make some headway for 2022. Um, in addition to that, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Tell everyone about the page that you feel led to share it with. And I want to um, apologize because on yesterday's premiere, I said that I was going to put the link to the journals because I talked about some, you know, uh, writing a vision and making it plain. And I do have these new dope journals. So today, I definitely double checked. I have the link in the description under this video right now. You can check it if you want to outside of the chat. And you can uh, purchase some journals and they can, they're can they on Amazon Prime if you have it. They'll come straight to you from Amazon if you want them. And I have other products and services that I will share with you as well. I always post on my community page. And if you like hearing these messages, if you want to talk to me personally, I know a lot of you don't know me um, outside of YouTube, but I am a professional inspirationalist. So I literally get paid to help people to live their authentic purpose. It's something I've been doing for well over 15 years now, and I love it. It's uh, A lot of people are like, wow, I didn't even know that was a thing, but it's actually a thing. And um, if you would like, definitely go to robinnicolek.com or imwiretoinspire.com. Get to the book me section and you can book a free 10 minute consultation with me if you like. I have three offerings on there currently, but I also have some that are not mentioned for my YouTube family because I literally do that based on what you need to discuss and how you possibly need to be counseled or coached. And I would like to be able to do that specifically to what your needs are. But those things are already packaged. They're just not posted publicly. So if you take the 10 minute consult, there's some information, you'll get a follow up email, you fill out a form and then we take it from there. So now that the housekeeping is done with all of that being said, guys, um, so tell me in the chat real quick what your favorite scripture is. Okay, just tell me that. I, I, and I'll get to why I asked you guys that in a minute. But this is what today's episode is about. Okay, so it's faith under pressure. You're like, okay, where was that derived from? Well, a good friend of mine had given me um, James. James chapter one to read. Okay. If you are not familiar with that chapter, it is loaded. Now let me give you guys something in full transparency. If I am going to actually and effectively be the inspiration specialist, excuse me, specialist, I have to be honest with you guys. You guys know that I'm human. And I think we all just have an understanding that everybody's human, but some of us have been called to be in uh, uh, positions and situations where we are to motivate and to help and inspire others, right? Well, even though we have those callings on our lives, sometimes life can get the best of us as well. And we may be actively high function in a high functioning way. Uh, the in, We may be inspiring other people, but we literally have zero inspiration for ourselves. Okay. And this has happened more often than not. And this can go from like a lay person like myself, who's not, you know, no one said that I'm a particular this or that in the church. I'm just doing what God has called me to do all the way up to a person who is clergy. So a lay person to a clergy person or whomever, there are a lot of people who are called who consistently show up. You see their videos, you hear their, their prophetic words, you see their sermons, you go to their classes, you take their courses. And I don't even necessarily mean people who are operating under the guise of, of faith. They're just people who genuinely have a calling to inspire others and help other people. And many times we have to do that and our plate is heavy as well. So with that being said, this is why this scripture was given to me and the scripture was pretty loaded. Now I'm going to be very transparent. I looked at this thing. I was like, man, this thing, wild magnolia, man. That's something we say in the world. It's like, it's just, 
out there is crazy, right? I was like, man, this thing is deep. Now, mind you, I have read the Bible before y'all cover to cover. I couldn't remember every single word that I read. Don't get me wrong, but I definitely, it took me 13 weeks and I read the Bible from cover to cover a few years ago. And um, James 1 kind of gives me like Romans 8 vibes. Is it Romans 8? It's, I forgot what chapter, but it's like a brutal chapter in Romans where it's like, yikes, like, It's not for the faint of heart. Like you can't read that chapter without feeling punched in the eye or convicted, right? And so when I was reading it, you know, I'm telling my my friend, I'm like, man, like, yo, I felt like this was harsh. This was heavy, but God wanted to give me something harsh and heavy. You know what I'm saying? So the 10 pro tips that I was given, they were broken down into two sections, right? So the first section is the first five of faith under pressure based on James 1 message message uh, Bible. And drop that in the comments for me, y'all. James 1 message Bible. And if you're following, take your notes. Hopefully, y'all going to get these journals. And when y'all get on here, you'll be able to uh, take notes. I'm actually going to do a journal specifically made for my lives and my premieres. And it'll be an uh, inspiration specialist journal, which it'll be called I'm Wired to Inspire. And you can put whatever you want in that. And you can kind of save it and you know just keep keep it, you know, with you to just pull it out every time, every now and then when you may need, you know, some inspiration or be reminded of some of the things we talked about. Right. So check this out. It's about to get good y'all. So peep game. So faith under pressure, right? God had given me 10 things and literally I was grabbing it verbatim from the message Bible and the Holy spirit was just showing me how to just sit with it a minute and to kind of just dive deep and just to give me what he wanted me to share with you guys, because I feel like this is going to help some of you, right? So the first five, I'm going to talk about who God is, but the last five, I'm going to talk about who you are. Okay. And this is good. Y'all, the crux of this entire thing with faith under pressure is that God does not want us to get thrown off course. Now, the reason why this thing punched me in the face and had me going, you know, willy nilly all over the place was because the truth is y'all, you know, that's how I've been. (laughs) That's just the truth. The truth hurts, but once you acknowledge the truth and you get past it, wonderful things happen. And so I was more committed to taking whatever L I needed to take or, or, or get any type of information I needed to get so that I could operate in excellence the way I know God has called me to. Y'all, we have low seasons and we have high seasons, but sometimes the seasons are not, you know, they're just not the best. It's just the truth, right? So I know you guys have, well, most of you, I believe, have heard the scripture about count it pure joy. You know, when the fiery trials come against you, that is how this scripture opens. Okay. The fiery trials. So peep this, y'all. Imagine if right now in your life, how many of you hit the comments, how many of you right now are going through something and it feels like a fiery trial? If you feel like you're going through a fiery trial, please hit the comments, right? This is what this scripture says out the gate. And y'all not gonna lie, I just bust out laughing. (laughs) When I read it, I say, whoop, I did that wrong. (laughs) Because it said, the first thing you have to do is count it pure joy. Y'all, not all joy, not just joy by itself. P-U-R-E. Do you know what it's like when we say, man, I was in pure joy. I was in pure bliss. That's the type of stuff we feel when a baby is born or when we fall in love or when somebody gets married or you get your dream job, you get your new house. Like it's, you, you know, you when you feel these feelings of euphoria, that's when something is pure joy. You know, we can have joy. Oh, I have joy in my heart. But you know when something is pure joy, y'all, that's like cartwheels. That's flipping. That's cutting up, carrying on. You screaming it to the top of your lungs. You blasting your favorite song. Do you realize the Lord is telling us that when it feels like all hell is breaking loose and we walking through a fire with no shoes on or hot coals, he's telling us we need to count that (laughs) pure joy. Y'all, I had to sit with that. How y'all feel about that? Tell me about that. Tell me your thoughts on that, because I'm going to be honest with you. That was crazy. It was so crazy and obtuse to me. I had to laugh. Now, I done heard that scripture a thousand times. But this time when I read it, I sat with it and it hit different. It did not, I did not feel the same. Okay. So see, fiery trials come when everything is all copacetic. And then all of a sudden, 
you feel like it's blazing. You feel like it's the extreme. Y'all know when it's extremely cold outside, how it's really, really uncomfortable. And then when it's really hot, it's really uncomfortable. So imagine a fiery trial, not just a trial. A trial could be, oh man, you know, my car broke down. Okay. And then they're telling you, okay, well, you're going to need a new carburetor. You're going to need a new uh, engine, whatever. Well, engine is basically need a new car. But basically they're telling you that whatever is wrong with your car is fixable. That's a trial, right? So you're like, oh, okay. A trial tribulation, if you will, whichever, you know, the interchangeable, right? So he tells you, he's like, yeah, look, it's no problem. It's going to cost you a pretty penny, but you don't need to get a new car because, you know, this is just a trial. The car is broken. We'll get it fixed. But when you go back to them, they're like, yo, come back. And they say, hey, you're going to actually need a new car. You don't went from having a trial to a fiery trial. <laughs> Y'all feel what I'm saying? So this is where faith under pressure comes in. We know pressure bust pipes. So we know that if you are under pressure and it's too much pressure, things will explode. And if you don't calm yourself down, it could be a mess. So that's why faith under pressure, that is the undercurrent of what our mindset should be when we feel ourselves flip-flopping, which is what the majority of James 1 is about. It is loaded. Y'all, even though I'm giving y'all 10 quick things, it's got way more than that. I'm just going to keep it a buck. It has way, way more than that. Okay? So let me get you to the first thing. So the first thing about God with faith under pressure in James 1 message version, God loves to help. That's the first thing I need to tell you for those of you who are hurting and you are feeling that heaviness, y'all, you're not by yourself. I would be a fake inspirationalist if I did not tell you I don't always feel inspired either. That's why I am pure in what I do. And that's why I am called to do it. And despite my feeling away, it does not edit me helping you. But in order for me to help you, in order for you to inspire other people and help others who God calls for you to help in your life, you just have to be honest. And you want to know why you still have to keep on keeping on? Because what did he just say? Count it pure joy, not joy, but pure joy when the fiery trials, not just the trials. He could have said, count it joy when the trials come against you. No, because what happens is if you continue to read Something happens when you go through the fire, just like a diamond. It perfects you. It's like God perfects everything concerning you. Like that Psalm 138 verse eight, God will perfect everything concerning you, right? It is important for you to understand if God didn't want it to be that way, he wouldn't have said it. So this is for the person right now who is really struggling with not only the trials, but now you're in a season of fiery trials at the beginning of this year. And there's maybe stuff that then lapped over from last year or stuff that, uh, you know, maybe just popped up in the first four days of the year. I'm not sure. But if he wants you to count it pure joy, right? In the midst of a fiery trial, like the extra spicy trial, then that means that there's something about God wanting you to come to him for help that you can't skip and you can't miss. Because that was my problem. My problem had become, I want to control it. I got to figure something out. Y'all, I had to say, I got to figure something out probably 50 times until it dawned on me. If you keep trying to figure something out, nothing is never going to happen, sis. I had to give myself my own self a, a pep talk. And here we go. Shameless plug. Don't forget, y'all. I have a book out called Pep Talk Prayers. Check it out. It's on Amazon as well. And it is basically um, talking about faith under pressure, essentially. You know, how we live our authentic purpose and how those little pep talks with God in these, these fiery places, they really can change our lives because we lend ourselves to hear him in those times, right? So understand this. Once you understand that you are in a fiery trial and you're struggling to have pure joy to rejoice like, oh, I'm so happy. My house burning down. You know, I lost my job, lost my car. Yeah. It's like literally God wants you to have the opposite reaction when you're in it. Now, let me tell y'all why it's important that y'all hear this breakdown. 
Some of you literally right now, now this is prophetic. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of you right now, your situation is so jacked up. You're actually getting, you have gotten angry at God when people have even tried to insinuate that you should be happy about things that's going on. It literally made you want to just chin check somebody and go off on them because you're like, oh, you play too much because no, hell is breaking loose and you are not going to make me try to act like I'm in heaven. It's a no for me, dog. A lot of y'all have felt like that recently. Hit the comments if you feel like being transparent and let us know. We fam up in here. Let each other know. You know what I'm saying? I don't want, I know, listen, if if it's only me, it's only me. I was feeling like that. So I'm just going to tell you that you're not by yourself. I was feeling like that. But the thing is, y'all, the point of this is that God loves to help. He is allowing a fiery trial and he wants you to find pure joy. Guess why, y'all? I would suffice it to say he's the pure joy that he wants us to focus on. That's my opinion. I really think the pure joy is basking in his goodness. Cause you, cause let's just think about it. Just sit with it a second. Whatever you got going through right now, the bills do, you know, this needs to be done. Some of y'all got money, your money straight, you're, you're faithful, you're tithing. And I mean, some of y'all dropping thousands and you're not batting the eyelash, your money, right? Your, all your finances in order. You don't have the regular problems other people have, but your health might be failing or you might be fine, but your loved ones might be going through something. Everybody is going through something, whether directly or indirectly, right? So I think it's important for you to understand that even now, even now, God loves to help you, you, you. He wants to help you and he loves to help you, right? But then that goes to the next thing, number two. Y'all, it says you have to ask boldly without a second thought. Some of you, you're not even asking because you're so mad. You're so upset. Or you just feel a way to the point where you just can't even get nothing out. Y'all, I was going through that recently. Like, I was so frustrated because I had gone through a situation where I was completely misunderstood. I was completely maligned. I'm not saying that I didn't do anything wrong, but I certainly did not deserve the way I was treated and attacked. And so it was very hard for me to see pure joy in that place. It was hard for me to see that. I was fully taking on all of the stuff that I did wrong. I had no problem with that. That was very hard. I was embarrassed. I didn't even realize half the things that were going on. But once I did, I was fine with it. But it was very hard once I realized that that mindset was not shared and reciprocated. So what the enemy tries to do in that space is he tries to some of y'all, he's trying to shut your mouth because he doesn't want you to ask boldly. He wants you to ask, he wants to make you cocky. He wants you to get ugly with God. He doesn't want you to say, he doesn't want you to ask boldly without a second thought. He wants you to start whimpering or screaming. He wants you to do one of those negative extremes and he wants you to overthink it. The, the word literally said, ask boldly without a second thought. That is what I'm going to encourage you to do. Once you know that God loves to help and you ask him for help, you're going to ask him boldly without a second thought. Okay. And here's the next thing. If you are mad right now about something material, if you are upset about something that has to do with something con pertaining to prosperity or just like a, a material thing, hey, don't count on prosperity. Don't count on it. If you really tussling with this, with this uh, scripture, because you know, we like to tussle sometimes with the word. We like to tussle, right? If you tussling with this word right now, trust me when I tell you, if it has to do with something material, God ain't through with you yet. He ain't done with whatever he trying to teach you because we got to grab, we got to graduate from that. Y'all, we can't be married to things. We cannot be married to to, to to this amount of money and this position and this opportunity and this car and this house and this, this, we cannot do that. Do not get it twisted. We can ask boldly without a second thought, but don't forget in your asking and you're trusting God to help you. Don't count on prosperity. You count on the pure joy that is the Lord. That is what God wants us to do. I am preaching to myself. Let me know in the comments if y'all liking this. Please ask any questions if you have them and I will surely answer you as we are going along. Now check this one out, y'all. 
There was something that they said in the scripture that it really stuck out to me. It said, petals are beautiful, but they wilt. Petals are beautiful, but they wilt. So what God wants me to share with some of you in particular is this. The old adage, everything that glitters ain't gold. Everything that sparkle is not necessarily meant to shine. What you have to understand is this. If you are focused on the petals, if you are focused on the beauty of the petals, if you are focused on that part, you're not, you're not miss. you can't, excuse me, you're, you're missing that is temporary. That part is temporary. Okay. And sometimes if we focus too much on the beauty of the petals, we are not paying attention to the fact that they wilt. And in that place of wilting, that is where the enemy gets us thrown off. Like, see, you was over there looking at them petals. God had you thinking those petals were beautiful. And see, now they wilted. They ain't nothing. So God's thing is going right back to the one I said before. Don't count on prosperity and don't count on what things look like. Come on, somebody. Don't count on what it's looking like. Because it can look beautiful. But if God is trying to prepare you and give you a bit of a stern word, it's because he don't want you to get caught up in what you see somebody. Come on. He wants you to pay attention. Hey, 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 look, you focusing on this thing and it looks beautiful, but it's going to wilt. I'm trying to give you what you need. So if it wilts, you're going to be unbothered. You're going to be willing to call me. You're going to ask me boldly without a second thought. You're not going to be tripping, flip-flopping back and forth. Oh God, the flower is wilted. It was so beautiful. He's going to be like, if you listen to what I'm telling you, you're not even going to care. Because you know it's some more flowers coming. You know they're going to wilt, but you're going to enjoy them for what they are. But you're going to keep your eyes on me. You're going to keep your trust in me, right? And y'all, here was the fifth and final thing of the top five of faith under pressure about who God is in this space. Y'all, God won't trip us up. The scripture says, lust gets pregnant and has a baby with sin. Ooh, ooh. Let me read that again. Lust gets pregnant and has a baby with sin. Listen, when your faith is under pressure, you have to understand the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the mind in any capacity. And that does not, you know, lust is not sexual. It's not just sexual at all. Lust can be so many things. People can have a wander lust. They want to wander all over the place. You can have a lust for things. You can have a lust for, for uh, ideas and people. You can, you can do things that can cause you to make those things idols above God. And some of you, even if it's a good thing, you might not realize it might be a nice thing to do. But it may not be the thing that God wants you to focus on. And just because it's nice, it doesn't mean it is something that you want that you're supposed to be doing. And it doesn't mean that God is okay with you doing it. A lot of people don't understand that, you know, but it's the truth. It is the truth. Listen, God won't trip you up. So if you know God told you something and you're feeling kind of iffy, you're feeling kind of funny right now, that's a red flag. God won't trip you up. Okay, so here's the top five. Faith under pressure about who God is. God is a helper. He wants to help you. He loves to help you. He's telling you, I need you to talk to me boldly without a second thought. Who else is he? He's like, listen, don't count on prosperity. Don't count on how beautiful and pretty things are. Pay attention to me. And lastly, I will not trip you up. Now, this is what happens in that James chapter one message version. Okay. Once you understand who God is in this thing, these are the things you have to understand about yourself. This is the first thing it says to us as a call to action. Act on what you hear. When you hear the voice of the Lord, act. Okay? The next thing it says, lead with your ears. That goes right back to hearing, y'all. The first one said, act on what you hear. And by the way, these are verbatim from this actual chapter and version. So please check this out. Okay? And drop this in the comments, y'all. Put it in there for me. The first one, well, number six of how excuse me, of who we are in the second batch of these tips is act on what you hear. The next thing is lead with your ears. So that's God telling us two times, y'all. Act and lead, act and move with what you hear in your ear. So he, he tells you two times in a row, two different ways. Go with what you hear from me. You want to know why he said that twice? Because some of us have been presented with things and other people have said something and we heard them when we took God out of the equation. When God said go left, but they came and said, well, look, you need to get this done. You don't have this. You need to get it. And then they telling you to do it. But God is like, no, don't do that. But you know what you're hearing from God and how God is leading you is going to sound crazy to everybody. So now you feel a way. 
How many of y'all have been having that experience? Because I know that I've had, I've had that recently. In fact, I just had it yesterday. Okay. So that's two things he's telling you. Now check out numbers, number eight, y'all to follow up. It's a follow up with your tongue. My God, listen to that. Act on what you hear, lead with your ears and follow up with your tongue. This is what this means. Once you follow up with your tongue, you speak in life. You are, you are verbally standing in agreement with what it is that God has promised. So act on what you hear, lead with your ears, follow up with your tongue, right? This is, this is a very important thing for you to catch y'all. You got to catch this. Make sure you write this in the chat for me. Now, this is how these, the last two go. They have to do with anger. It says, let anger straggle along in the rear. Now, I want you to peep that. Now, you do know that there's a scripture where Jesus threw the table, right? So he was angry. He exhibited the human emotion of anger. So mind you, it says, let anger straggle along in the rear. So listen to what it's saying. It's literally telling you, you probably going to be angry during your fiery trial because you're supposed to be counting it all joy. You are so mad. You don't want to ask boldly because you're, you're overthinking. So you're definitely giving it a second, a third, a fifth, a hundred thought, a <laughs> hundred thoughts, right? You could possibly be caught up on something that has to do with uh, human prosperity, right? Or something that, that just seems like a, a human issue that, that you're having is not a spiritual issue, possibly. And you have all these other things that you could be focusing on. And by the time you get here, literally, he's just saying, listen, I know you're going to be angry. Isn't God beautiful like that? He already telling you, look, I know you're going to be mad. <laughs> I know y'all feel me. I know you're going to be mad. I already know, baby, you're going to be mad. But how about this? And your anger and you're being mad. Let it tag along in the back because he's straight up telling you, I know it's going to tag along. I'm not going to act like it's not. It's going to tag along because you're probably going to be angry, but put it in the back. And this is the final one. Number 10. He says, it's simply that God's righteousness doesn't grow from human anger. God's righteousness does not grow from human anger. Nothing good comes from human anger if it is misappropriated. And instead of you letting it straggle in the back, you let it tag along in the front or the side. That will be the end of you. That will be the demise of that dream, that focus, that vision, because you have allowed anger to get in an improper place. Okay, so check this out. Faith under pressure, the whole crux of faith under pressure is that God does not want us to get off course. He does not want you to get off course. This is so important. He does not want you to get off course. Okay? He just doesn't. So for those of you who are in budding relationships right now, and you might be having some, some ups and downs, for those of you who are having some come, you having a coming to Jesus, like, okay, Lord, I'm about to be a particular age, a certain, you know, certain thing about to happen. I really need you to just you know, show me what's going on. For those of you who are healing from horrible past relationships, losing friendships, uh, gaining friends, gaining marriages, true loves, babies, all of these things, it really runs the gamut. That's why I'm naming all of these things because a lot of times y'all, when we are in the midst of having the best times of our lives, we can often be in the midst of having some of the most painful times as well. And James 1, although very heavy, in a very loaded scripture, and I only just scratched the surface of James 1 because there's way more to talk about in this scripture. I want you to understand something in these 10 pro tips about having faith under pressure. God is very clear about who he is and who we are in that one chapter. And when you go back and read it for yourself, you can surely please hit me up, y'all. If you want to, Go ahead, like I said, go to my unwiredtoinspire.com, go to robinacoldk.com if you want, and, and do the 10 minutes with me if you want to talk to me about it. it I, don't, I would totally love that or email me, hit the comments, but let's talk about it because you might be seeing some other things in here too. But this is what I know for sure God wants you to walk away with today. When your faith is under pressure, you have to understand that he's always there to help. 
You cannot let the enemy put a muzzle on your mouth and have you overthinking. You are to ask and speak boldly without a second thought. Okay. And remember, if what you are upset about right now has to do with something dealing with something material or prosperity, don't count on that. That's temporary. And if you're getting caught up with how cute he is or how fine he is or how much money they got or, or what they offering you all, what, what this might be. If, it, if it's something that seems enticing like those petal, petals that look beautiful, but you're not anticipating that they're going to surely wilt, right? He wants you to understand that he's not going to trip you up. He won't do it. He's not going to trip you up. And not only is he not going to trip you up, he's going to remind you anything that you lust and after that's basically putting it before me and is becoming idolatry. This is not what I want for you. This is not your lot. This is not your lot in life. So he lets us know out the gate in the first five, this is who I am. So even though I know some things are going to pop up, let me tell you what I need you to do because this is who I am. Now, I told you what I needed you to do, but this is what I need. I told you who I am, but this is what I need you to do. Act on what I tell you. Okay? Not only do you act on it, but lead with it. Act on it, but then when you have to make boss moves and make, make hard decisions, you lead with what I spoke to you in your ears. You lead with what I told you. And then when somebody wants to question you about what you're doing, because it's the opposite of what they're saying, that's when I need to follow you to follow up with your tongue. Open up your mouth and say, hey, this is what my choice is. And you don't have to tell them God told you to do it, but you know he told you to do it. You follow up if need be. But it's telling you right there, double. Act on what you hear and lead with your ears. Follow up with your tongue. And don't forget, God is not a stranger. He's not surprised by you being angry. He made you. He gave you the ability to be angry. But he also gave you instructions on what to do with anger. Oh, I know it exists, son. I know it exists, daughter. And it's going to be there. But guess what? You tell it to get behind you. Sound familiar? Get behind thee, Satan. Anger, get behind thee? Exactly. Let anger straggle along in the rear. Don't make it your bestie and put it on the side and don't put it in the front so that you can lead with it because it's going to ruin whatever it is God is doing. And most importantly, if anger done made it to your side, either side, left or right, or if it made it to your front, I can guarantee you, you done ended up in the wrong direction. You're not going to end up at your place. You're not going to end up at the ordained place because anger will always take you to the screwed up place. Never forget that. And the most important thing to remember as we close out God's righteousness it just doesn't grow from human anger. So with that being said, remember this. God does not want us to get off course. And if you are feeling faith, your faith under pressure, you are feeling a lot of pressure and you are faced with the task of having strong faith and consistent faith. I want you to be encouraged today and I want you to sit with James one the message Bible and read further along. It's not it's not a long book. So maybe read, I think it's five chapters, read them all. If you feel led to, it's a pretty loaded uh, book, but understand something. I want to make sure that you are inspired today to see God more on what you're going through. And maybe today, just maybe something is going to give you a little inkling to say, you know what? <laughs> maybe I'm not looking at this the right way. Maybe I'm overthinking. If anybody is, or if I didn't say nothing else, if any of you have been overthinking a situation, number two was for you. As boldly, without a second thought. Some of you can't even ask God because you're too busy having multiple thoughts and overthinking. And all he wants you to do is not give it a second thought. He wants you to trust him so big and, and take his offer of wanting to help you because he loves to help you. He wants you to jump at that so quick that you don't even have time to have a second thought. Because you trust him that much. And y'all, I'm speaking to myself. I'm going to have to go back and play this back for myself. Okay? Because this is just the reality of what we're dealing with right now. And even though we're called to say things and do certain things, trust me when I tell you, there is always an equal and opposite to everything. So for everything that you do good, you got to stay prayed up because everybody's not necessarily going to be happy for you. And the enemy does not like to see us win. <laughs> and especially because it's the wins are for God. They're not for us. They make God look good. And he don't like that. <laughs> so if he can make you look stupid and make you look crazy, he definitely going to do that. So try not to fall for that. 
and try to be encouraged moving forward. So I thank you guys for listening to me. If you want me to keep doing these every day or as many times a week as I can, please, please hit the chat. Please let me know. Please like and subscribe. Please send it over. I'm also posting a prophetic word and that's going to be coming up in a few. Um, God had given me an, a separate word and I'm going to post that as well. Um, and just remember, you can go to robinnicolek.com and you can check out some of my um, services that I offer. Please book with me. I have a breakthrough session and I also have a coupon for that too. So if you're interested in a breakthrough section, uh, session and you check it out, please hit me up and I will send you a coupon code and you will get a $25 discount on that. That's temporary. That's a new year's thing that I'm doing. It ends on January 15th. Yes, it ends on January 15th. So that gives you a little bit of time. Today is the fourth. So you got almost eh, maybe around a week and a half, almost two weeks to partake in that if that's something that you'd like to do. And don't forget, I was talking about righteousness, right? I have a new journal. It says kind, rich, favor, right. And that was inspired by both sides of my family, the Kendricks and the favor rights. But this journal is about righteousness, kindness, richness in God, okay? And favor with God. And I think that it will really bless you. There's scriptures on all of those in the book. And if you want to begin to write more about things like this James chapter and uh, some of the things you've gleaned from it, some of the personal things you've been working on when it comes to you know, wanting wealth and riches so that you can, you can live a prosperous life financially and live a rich life with the Lord. If you want to operate in kindness, you want to maybe take some of the edge off. So you're not so snappy. You know what I'm saying? If you want to see God and be in position to receive his favor. Okay. It's kind, rich favor, right? You want to operate in righteousness. Please check it out. It's in the link in my description box. And I have a ton of other ones, like I mentioned. I'll be talking about these every day because I'm excited. I've been working on a lot of stuff for y'all. This is just the beginning with these um, these lives and these premieres. But thank you guys so much. I want you to make sure you put on the notifications too because that prophetic word is going to be popping up pretty quickly too after this. And again, hit the comments. Let me know if you need anything. I love you guys. And thank you so much for listening. I am wired to inspire. And I hope you are too. Have a blessed day.